Hello and welcome. So in this video we are going to take a look at getting data from SQL databases into pandas data frames and also storing pandas data frames into SQL databases. I think this is very useful so I definitely recommend to check this out. In the end we are going to grab some financial data and store that in the database so that you can see a more realistic use case. This video is based on my previous video on Python and SQL so I recommend to check it out beforehand. But in case you didn't let's quickly take a look at the database we have created last time. So our database name was our database.db and we had a table employees or we have created a table employees with three columns name, surname and salary. And inside this table we have one single entry Maria Mayer with a salary of 100k. So let's read out this data. First of all we need to create a database engine and we are storing that in variable which we are calling engine. As an alternative, you can also use the connection which we have worked with the last time, but you will have restricted functionality. So I highly recommend you use an engine. And besides that, when you are working with MySQL or MS SQL Server, you will need an engine. To create an engine, you have to install SQL Alchemy. So by just typing in pip install SQL Alchemy. So in my case, you see requirement is already satisfied. So yeah, let's create that engine. So we're using SQL alchemy dot create underscore engine. And in our case, as we are working with the SQLite database, the connection string is pretty straightforward. We are just using SQLite colon three slashes and then our database. The connection string looks different for MySQL databases and even more different for MS SQL Server Databases. So let's execute that. And now read out our employee table and directly store that in the data frame. And we can just use the pandas function read underscore SQL. And here we can provide the table name, which was employees. And we also have to provide the engine here. And with that, we are getting what we just saw, right? So Maria Mayer with a salary of 100K. Now the special thing about the read SQL function is that you can use it in two fashions. First, you can just provide the name of the table, which you want to read out, and then you're getting the whole table here. But you can also, and that is pretty awesome, you can also use SQL statements here. So for example, the very basic one, select star from, so this is just the SQL language for select all columns from a certain table, which is employees. If we're executing that, you see that we are getting the same as we have just one entry, right? But we could also uh, filter this data here, for example, where let's say the salary is larger than 100K, so we wouldn't get any entries here, right? So where salary, is larger than 100k and now we see we're getting an empty data frame right so again you can use both you can use sql statements or just provide the table name so this is pretty nice right and for now that's already it for the read sql function so let's move on to the next part where we are writing data frames into the sql table so first of all, we need to create a data frame. So let's create a very simple data frame, I'm just calling that df1 here. And we're using the data frame function. And now I'm just creating a row entry as it would be in the database. So I'm just taking name here and take Maxwell. Uh, what else do we need? We need the surname. which is Foster and he has a salary of let's say 120k. So totally unrealistic salaries I know but this is not what this video is about. So let's execute that and let's take a look at that. Now we see we are getting a data frame right consisting of this one single entry. 
And our goal now is to add this data frame to our SQL database or, and uh, to be more specific to the table employees. And we can do that by using df1, so this data frame, to SQL, then provide the name of the table where we want to get that. And now, of course, again, provide the engine. And now you will see that we are getting an error. And let's take a look at that error together. So the error is telling us table employees already exist. And this, this is very important to understand. By using this to SQL function, you're just creating a whole new table, right? So if you're not specifying anything else here in, in this function, you're just creating a whole new table. And you can't do that because the employees table is already existent. But if we would provide a new name here, so I don't know, um, persons or something like that, we would create a whole new table, okay? But nevertheless, we wanna append this entry to our existing table, right? Therefore, we have to specify if exists, append this. And if we're executing that, we will get another error message. So let's quickly take a look at that. Table employees has no column named index. So this is the problem right now. And the problem with that, so here is more specific, but the problem in a nutshell is that the table is being written in with this index, right? But the table before doesn't have an index. So if we are reading that out, you will see an index here. But if we are taking a look at the database itself, it doesn't have an index, right? So this is why we have to specify index as false here. And with that, we can append this row to the table. So let's execute that. And now you see it has been executed. So let's take a look at the database again by using read SQL and then just use employees and provide the engine. And now you see we have Maria and Maxwell here, right? One quick remark to probably save you a lot of trouble. If you're using replace here, and this is important, if you're using replace, you're replacing the whole table. So you are not only replacing one single entry, but you're replacing the whole table with this one. So imagine you have an employee table with 200 entries and you made a mistake by appending a row and this row is wrong. And you are just thinking, okay, I'm just replacing the last row. No, if you are specifying that as replace, you will overwrite the whole table. So I'm going to show you. So right now, as you see, the table is like so, right? And if I'm using the replace function, and not, not function, the replace argument for the if exists argument, I can execute that. And now you see I have only Maxwell Foster here, right? So be very cautious with that here. Now, finally, let's pull some financial data. Maybe I think a lot of you guys are interested in the finance topic, so this might be helpful for you. So let's quickly pull uh, Joe Finance here as a library. And now uh, I'm just thinking about a fancy stock. Let's take GameStop, right? So let's create a data frame and pull some juicy GameStop data. So GME is the GameStop uh, ticker. Um, yeah, let's just start uh, in the beginning of 2021. So we are pulling the data. So this data frame is looking like that, right? And now I want to store that in a data frame, has a lot of advantages, as I already explained in other videos. So you can make more efficient queries and stuff like that. But to store that in a database now, we can just use what we just learned. We can use df to SQL and then name the table. And I'm just naming it how it is. So I'm naming that GME. Provide the engine. And yeah, that's basically it. 
So we can execute that. Now let's take a look at what we have created. Let's read that. And now you see you have a you have some data for GameStop in your database, right? And yeah, that's basically it. So if you find this interesting, so if you want to get more details on how to build a, a finance database for yourself containing interesting stocks or a huge amount of stocks, uh, we can build that together, of course, but it should be enough to use those concepts to build it on your own. But of course, if you need support with that, just drop me a comment. We can build an exemplary database together. I'm fine with that. Looking forward to that if you need that. So yeah, um, that's basically it. So thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. See you next time. Bye bye. And please subscribe and like this video. Thank you very much.